All right, so welcome back, everyone. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play City of Iron. But let's first talk about how you set up the game uh, City of Iron. And this is the first edition. So the second edition is a little bit different from the first edition. There's a few differences, especially in looks as well as just how you do certain things. There's definitely some differences. So this is for people who have the first edition or who maybe want to get the first edition of City of Iron if they can find it. So let's show you how to set up first. So uh, one thing you'll notice we have all these goods here. So we have where I'm pointing now we have turnips. Um, these are uh, I guess sort of like yaks. Um, I can never pronounce the name per correctly, but it starts with an S. So they're like yaks. Then we have uh, glow moss. Okay, so that's the third good. Then we have ore. Then we have gears. And then we have octopus tentacles. This is uh, salt. These are batteries, basically. There's uh, silk. And then these are like crystals right here. So those are all of the goods that are in the game. But um, when you're playing a two-player game, you will not be playing with the ore, and you will not be playing with these. So these two goods here, we won't be playing with. And you'll notice that they don't have any cubes whatsoever at them. You'll notice all these cubes here, because I only have it set up for a two-player game. So we won't be playing with these, and we won't be playing with these. So another thing... Um, each player is going to start with is um, each player basically this is like a deck building game and so you have a small little deck of cards you actually have two different decks of cards that you start with you have the military deck the soldier with an attack of one the captain with an attack of two and then you have the uh, civilian deck the cartographer and the scholar. So this is what you start with. Two decks that you start with. Meaning, since this is a deck building game, you're going to definitely want to add to these two decks by getting more civilian cards and more military cards. You're definitely going to want to do that. And in so doing so, you're going to want to then, of course, at some point buy these. Now, at the end of the round is when you're going to get to buy these cards, okay? You have to pay for them to put them into your deck. But once you pay for a card you're going to put into your deck, it's actually basically going to go into your hand. Meaning that on the next turn, when you start the game again, during the next round, you'll be able to use that card right away, which is nice. You won't have to wait for it to cycle through your deck. You'll get to use these right away once you pay for them. So it's a nice way of getting to... Maybe if you're trying to attack another another town or something like that, getting some military cards during the end of the during the end of a round might be a way to do it. So that way you can attack right away on your next on the next turn. That could be a definitely a strategy. Now, so we're going to go ahead and put the uh, the character cards, the two two separate card decks. For the two separate players in this game, which are the Crusarians and the Toad Inventors of Om. So these are the Toad Inventors of Om. Okay, so we'll put their stuff over here on the ore, and we'll put the Crusarians' stuff, their character cards and specialty cards, are going to go on those batteries. Okay since they're not being um, used anyways. And since I have limited space, it just makes it easier for me doing it this way. So one thing that makes the uh, Toad Inventors of Om a little different from the Crusarians is um, they actually get to start with three set of civilian cards. They get to start with the Scholar, which obviously looks a little different from the Crusarians, which makes sense because they're toads. But they get to start with the fixer as well as the cartographer. So they get the fixer. They get this. They get the civilian card. And so it's recommended maybe perhaps you draw this one first for your first 
uh, civilian card. Because the fixer here is going to basically let you um, bid for a one coin discount. Now what's bidding? Well you'll notice there are two cubes up here. This is a bidding tract. So in this game you're going to spend money probably to bid who decides who goes last and who goes first. So if you really want to go first you might want to bid some money so that way you can go first. But also your opponent might do the same thing. So for instance, one player is always going to get to choose to, uh, first to either bid. So for instance, they could say, I'm gonna, I want to go first, but I'm going to bid zero money doing so. If they do that, the player who's going to go second either has to go second or they have to spend one money. They have to pay one money to, so that way they'll go first. There are advantages of going first, and so you definitely might want to do that occasionally if you want to go first. But the cool thing about the toads is, for instance, if the toads, the color green is for the toads, if the toads were to go here and they decided to discard the fixer, okay, they discard the fixer when bidding, then it's going to decrease the cost by one coin. So essentially, they're trying to go first, but they don't have to spend any money if they put it on the number one by discarding this card. So it's a, a nice handy way of ensuring you're gonna go first, probably in the first round, because then your opponent will have to spend two coins if they really wanna go first. So, and you didn't have to spend anything anyways choosing that as well. So it's a good way of getting your opponents to lose some money if they really want to go first, or it ensures that you get to go first if you have the Toad Inventors of Om. And if when this card is drawn, you might want to use it occasionally, especially if you're playing with more than two players. It might be useful to do so. Now, one thing everybody is going to start with is they're all going to start with a corresponding land. Over here we have the Red Forest, and here is the Emerald Hills. We all start with one land, and we all start with one district, which allows us to build buildings in our district. And so that means we can have a maximum of five buildings in our district. So we'll put that right there. Okay, so there's our district and our land, and it tells you what types of buildings you can build. Some buildings can only be built near the ocean. Some buildings can only be built in the mountains. Some can only be built in the grasslands. Some can only be built in the forest. And we start with the same exact lands. So no one's going to have an advantage on lands. But because you're building this here, you'll notice, because you have this district here, you'll notice there's this nice little uh, clock icon, sort of like a stopwatch type of icon. This indicates that during... Each of the end phases and the beginning of the game, you're going to draw, you're going to draw one civilian card. So part of the setup is you're actually going to have one of these civilian cards basically ready to go for your first turn if you wanted to. So for instance, <laughs> the Toad Inventors of Om could have this card first if they so wanted it. If they decided to stack their deck that way, and stacking your deck in this game is allowed. So that's really cool. So like when you're building your deck and you're about ready to draw cards, you can stack your deck ahead of time, putting certain cards where you want them to be. So that way you draw the card you want first to ensure that you draw cards that you want more than the ones you don't want. Something like this, perhaps. And then the first card would be this one which is the one I wanted, because that's how I stacked the deck. So you can stack your deck in this game. You don't shuffle your deck, you don't need to do that. You just, uh, when you have a discard pile full of cards, you just stack it the way you want it, and then <laughs> you'll be drawing the card you want the most first, which is nice, okay? Now, um, so you don't start with any military cards. That means you're gonna have to draw these if you're going to want to do some attacking attacking towns and things like that. So you will not start with these ahead of time, okay? So uh, that's basically how that's going to work. So that's kind of a handy little thing for the bidding if you're the Toad Inventors of Om. Okay, so we talked about the goods that we have here a little bit. So in this game, when you get a good, let's say you get some glow moss here by either 
by either attacking a town or building a building. If the building says you get some a, a certain amount of glow moss, then you'll get to move your cube that many amount. And then during the end phase, as in after each round is over or year, you're going to get this amount of money if you have the highest of that particular good. If your opponent is on there, but he doesn't have as much as you, he doesn't get any money, okay? But if you're tied with the same amount of good, then you'll both get that same amount of money. So you share the amount, you each would get two in this, in this way. So in this game, you're basically going to get some money at the start of the game, you're going to get seven coins, and then at the end phase, you're going to get at least two coins every end phase. But the way you get more money is by building buildings in your district, in your land, as well as conquering towns, and as well as obtaining goods. And so you'll be keeping track of your goods in this location here. So that's what you're going to do with that. So let's see here, what's next? Okay, so then there is something else. Okay, so that's the districts, got that over with. So up here are the lands, okay? So you can visit the lands when you get the specialty explorer. He's one of the specialty character cards that you can get in the civilian deck. When you purchase him, you'll be able to visit other lands, assuming you have enough navigation. We'll talk about that later, but that's what those four lands are up there are for. Okay, so then, another thing is each player, basically, to indicate how much money they're making, is going to start at two, like I said, so... You're going to have a cube up, up here on this number to indicate that that's how much you're getting. So that's what you're going to get. And you'll get more. You'll get one. So it will go up one for every building you build and every town you conquer. It's going to go up one. But it can also go down because when you conquer a town, your opponent can conquer it. It's going to be a little harder for them probably, but they can conquer it. So like for instance... Here are the towns. So if I attacked Sneeple, okay, so the Toads, they attacked Sneeple, they conquered it. You would now flip it over to, actually, sorry, it would actually be two. So this is the unconquered side of Sneeple. So this is how it's going to start. You're going to, if you're going to attack it, it's only going to, it's only going to take attack power of two and one navigation. So that means you need a character who has at least one of these little compasses as well to travel with you basically so that way you can travel to this town and conquer it once you have conquered it you'll flip it to the other side it will be yours you will get obviously these yaks here or whatever they're called and then if your opponent was to take it away from you they would have to have an attack of four so yes it would be a little bit harder to take but at some point they probably will take it away from you because so, that's pretty low so they'll probably have an attack of four later down the road. Pretty soon, they could easily take it away from you. If they take the building away from you, then you would go down one because you have lost the town because you gained one, basically one additional money for each end of the round by getting the town. But since you lost the town, it would cause that to go down. So that's the problem with getting towns is it doesn't cost any money to take a town, but the problem is your opponent's they can obviously take them away from you. However, buildings, you don't have to worry about. You build a building in your town, your opponent can't take that away from you. So you're good on buildings. You don't have to worry about losing your buildings. Okay, so those are the different types of buildings, and there are different numbers on these buildings. So you'll separate them into three piles. The ones with the one star will go in one pile, the ones with the two stars will go in another pile, and the ones with the three stars will go into a separate pile. There's also a pile that has zero stars. You're not supposed to use those in your first game, okay? So they will go up here in separate piles. I'll just leave them there for the moment so they're out of my way. Okay, then there is a basically a huge deck of cards. These building cards are what you're going to be building, okay? And there's quite a few of them here. But um, the way the game ends, basically, is going through the entire pile of cards that you build. To end the game, you pretty much have to go through every single building 
here to go through to end the game. So that's basically when the game is over is when you've gone through all of these cards. So um, you'll separate them into three piles. You'll notice I have them here in three separate piles. There's the A pile, there's the B pile, and there's the C pile. What you're going to do is you're going to take these scoring cards. So that's scoring card A and B and C. So you're going to put scoring card C at the very bottom of the C deck. And then you'll flip it over like so. Then you'll do the same thing with the B deck. With the B, you're going to put scoring card B at this location here. And then put it on top of that. And then you'll put score card A at the bottom of this one and put it on top of this, forming the deck of cards. Now, you're going to score three times in this game. When those scoring cards show up, they're going to show up during the end phase. If a scoring card shows up during the end phase, you do not score at that moment. You'll set it aside, probably in the map or something, so that way you know that the end of the next round is when you're going to score the points. Now, how do you score points in this game? Well, the main way you're going to score points is your goods. There are, basically, let's see if we can get a closer up um, visual on some of these goods. Okay, so here we have the octopus tentacles and the gears. These indicate the money that you're going to obtain for your goods at the end of each round. These up here are victory points. So when you are scoring victory points, you're going to score, if you have the most gears, for instance, you're going to score four points. And the player who's in second place is going to score two points if they have their cube on here. So if they don't have their cube um, on, a, on at least one, they won't score any points at all. But that's how you're going to score points. You're going to do this three times in the game. It's going to happen two times during the middle of the game. And then... The last time will be at the end of game you're going to score, and you'll score some additional points as well. Not only will you score points based on all the goods you have the most of and stuff like that, you're also going to score additional points for like the most coins, for instance, um, the most of one particular good, which means that if one player has like, let's say, 10 of one particular good and nobody else has that high of a number, then they would win and they would score um, two points for that. OK, so that's what that means. So if you have if you're the player that has the most of a particular good and the other player doesn't have any goods that come close to that number, you score the points, basically. You're also going to score points for other things like having the most owned towns. So if you have the most conquered towns, you'll score three additional points for the most if you're the player with the most. So that's how that works. Um, so that's how the goods work. So not only are the goods going to make you money, they're also going to get you victory points during the course of the game three times. So that's how that works. Okay, so let's zoom out. Okay, so I explained that. Okay, so let's finish up the setup real quick. Let's talk about the player boards themselves a little bit. Let's bring us down a little bit closer and get a better look at the Toad Inventors of Om. So obviously you can tell that these are definitely toads or frogs, right? So this is the player board here. This is where your deck is going to go. You'll also notice this is how much money you'll be making um, right here, it'll indicate how much you're making at the end of the round, but you're going to put your decks here. Your military deck is going to go right here, so this is where it would go. And then when, they, when you've used your cards for the military deck, here's the discard pile for the military deck. And then the, the deck for the civilians are going to go here, and this is the discard pile for, the, uh, for them as well. Then you'll notice we have three squares here. These are actions, okay? So you'll be taking your action. Each round has three actions. So each player gets three actions per round. So you'll take an action, I'll take an action, and then you'll just flip it over indicating that you took your action. And that's how you're going to keep track. After everyone has flipped over their actions and they've taken their actions, then the round will be over 
obviously. And then a whole bunch of stuff will happen at that moment. Okay? That's basically the setup for the game. We'll talk about in the next video a little bit more detail on how to play this game in the next video.